loss of any sense of individuality, community or even nationhood. I think this local government reorganisation is very bad news for Ponta Dawe and the Swansea Valley in two respects. First of all, there's no Welsh Assembly or Parliament to provide the strategic overview for the future of Wales and indeed the future of our area, the big issues that have to be dealt, dealt with at that level. And they, instead, you have this uh, massive explosion of quangos, uh, what, uh, occupied by what I call the quafia, this new breed of people who are appointed by the Secretary of State, often without any local connections or connections other than they are Conservative Party supporters. And so you're seeing the destruction of democracy. And at the same time, you're seeing also through this local government uh, measure an attempt by the government to destroy the principle of local democracy, for which we've fought hard in Wales over many decades. And it seems as if whenever you get strong local government, central government from London comes in and tries to destroy it. And the model of local government that I f believe the Conservatives have at the present time is not local democracy where you have power coming up from the bottom upwards, but a view where the town hall becomes simply a, uh, an administrative unit for central government dishing out contracts to private companies instead of running public services on behalf of the people democratically accountable and democratically expressed. That is the model I believe in and which we've, tr we've believed in in South Wales and in communities like Pontadawi. And it's being destroyed day by day as local government is strangled from the centre. A chaos of areas, a chaos of authorities and a chaos of rates. Such was the way local government was being described towards the second half of the 19th century. Strange how the wheel of local government appears to have turned full circle because these same words could be used to describe local government today. It was partly in an attempt to deal with this chaos that the first meeting of the provisional Glamorgan County Council took place here at the Gwyn Hall Neath on the 31st of January 1889. Sir Henry Hussey Vivian Bart MP, the first Lord Swansea, presided over the meeting and a Mr. Ernest Hall Headley, formerly of Pontadawe, was one of the first members. No ordinary man could serve as a county councillor, as in 1889 the right to vote was extended to little over 11% of the population. The Anisteru Gate Toll House is one example locally of the ad hoc bodies that existed in the early part of the 19th century. It is a reminder of the turnpike system of the road trusts, which were groups of local people, usually landowners, who, under a private act of parliament, had the authority to construct and repair lengths of road and recover the costs by levying tolls on the users. Until quite recently, this was the site of the former Danabryn Hostel, which, when it was built in 1879, was a workhouse for the poor. Danabryn is now a modern, purpose-built housing complex run by the county council. But it was not until 1930, over 300 years after the Poor Relief Act, that caring for the poor became the responsibility of county councils. With no great lasting improvements in the relief of the sick or the poor in 300 years of ad hoc bodies, it became evident that a simple system of general local authorities offered distinct advantages. As well as blurring boundaries and encouraging a jumble of authorities to take responsibility for the social services of the day, services like public health, roads and bridges, housing and education, the free market approach, as it is now known, also created a chaotic rating system, which saw some people having as many as 18 different rate demands, because there were so many overlapping authorities competing for public funds. Whether the threat is local government reorganisation and the loss of a sense of locality or the chaos of the free market approach of the 19th century and the loss of public services, Pontadawe Community Council fully believes that it is by preserving the Welsh language and the Welsh way of life that it can best serve the needs of the community and help retain its unique sense of identity.
It also believes that with the ever-increasing centralization of power at Westminster and Brussels, that community councils will have a vital role to play in bridging the inevitable gap between the new super councils and the man in the street. For more than a thousand years of history, the people of Wales have struggled to defend their individuality against the suffocating power of the Romans, the armed occupation of Edward I and the Act of Union of Henry VIII. Today, Wales is an integral part of the British Isles, yet, at its heart, it is a country with a strong sense of nationhood and a distinct identity which is founded on its language, its culture and its religion. Wales is a land of exceptional contrasts. It is the land of fiery dragons, of fairy tale castles and fighting Welsh princes. It is the land of song, of chapel hymn singing and magnificent male voice choirs, of Eistedd Vodai, of poets and preachers, of green valleys, hills and mountains, of fields and farms, of coal and steel, of rugby and radicalism, of Rebecca and Chartism, of non-conformity, of nationalism, of liberalism and of socialism. In Wales, the word community has a special meaning. The basis of community upon which Welsh life is founded is a sense of belonging. There is a word in Welsh, canavin, which has no real English equivalent. Its nearest translation is neighbourhood. The word describes an almost mystical sense of place, a deep-rooted attachment to the land as a breeding ground of people. The word abounds with undercurrents of folklore and the bonds which have developed over the centuries between the land and those who live on it. But as important as the community is to Wales and the Welsh way of life, undoubtedly by far the most significant feature in preserving the Welsh identity has been and continues to be the Welsh language and Welsh culture. Well, fel prif y thrawau sy'r ysgol Gymraeg fan hyn yn mwynt o dywe, rwy'n sylwi ddoli cymaint, wel, pa mor bwysig mae'r ôl yr ysgol o fewn y gymuned. Mae'r ysgol yn chwarae rhan allweddol iawn yn yr ardal hon. Nid dim ond yn, yn ymhentref hon o dywe, ond yn yr ardaloedd eraill hefyd. A i ni yn yr ysgol, wrth gwrs, yn ymgeisio, sicrhau fod yr ysgol yn galon i, I, I nifer o weithgareddau sydd yn mynd mlaen yn y pentre. Felly, mae'r rôl sydd gan yr ysgol yn rôl bwysig iawn o fewn y gymuned. Uh, mae llawer iawn o gyndisgyblion ar ysgol hon yn chwarae rhan fflein llaw iawn yn y gymuned a hefyd yng Ngweithgarwch Diwylliedig Cymru. A fi'n siŵr gyda rhyw bedwar gant o blant sy'n gyda ni yn yr ysgol ar hyn o bryd. Fe fydd gan y plant yna hefyd maes o law, gyfraniad pwysig a gwerthfawr iawn i wneud i'w hardal nhw ag i, I, I gymuned pont o'r dawe. Well, all my family spoke Welsh and it's very important to me that my children could speak Welsh as well. I am a Welsh person. I want my children to have all the benefits of being able to speak Welsh. But the academic side as well is excellent, you know, so I think we've benefited all round, really. As a council, we are mindful of the fact that we have many cultural and historical treasures within our catchment area. Gellionen Chapel has been steadfast uh, to its Welshness since the year 1692. And we as a council are anxious to preserve this and also its importance in the Welsh religious history as a unique place of worship. We are a bilingual council, most of our members being Welsh-speaking. Soon after we formed our council, we decided that we would give equal validity to Welsh and English. Although our minutes are not presented in Welsh, members may speak in English or in Welsh. We also decided that we would be members of the Welsh Association of Town and Community Councils, Cynghore Tref Abro Cymru in order to be a part of the Welsh scene and to be able to contribute to the Welshness of the association. We have in our locality a monthly Welsh language newspaper, Llais, 
which is set in one of our halls in Trebanus. And most of our members are volunteers as reporters or as editors or as photographers. Our hall at Trebanus is also home to three Welsh language classes run by Swansea University College. These have been outstanding successes in the last seven years. And at least a dozen new Welsh speakers emerge from these classes annually. Rini fel cyngor yn sylweddoli fod arno ni gyfrifoldeb mawr i ddiogelu'r iaith Gymraeg a'i thraddodiadau. A chred afa ein bod ni fel cyngor ti fewn ni derfynau cyllideb fechan yn gwneud yn dda iawn i'r cyfeiriad yma. The motto of council, bid ben, bid bont. He who would be a leader, let him first be a bridge, is taken from the tales of the Mabinogion. It is a story about a giant called Bendy Gaidran and the sacrifice he makes to save his sister from humiliation. The word Pontadawe means bridge on the river Tawe, and there is also the upper Clidach River, which runs through a picturesque wooded valley known to some as Cwm Dy Glen, but which the council prefers to call simply Cwm Dy. A volunteer acting as tree warden in this area is Mr David Evans. My first involvement was as tree warden. Uh, this, was, um, this is run by the British Tree Council, a national organisation, uh, which is built to build awareness of trees within the area. And this uh, then asked, you know, begged me to go back to the community council and say, hang on, we've got a piece of woodland here that is really, really good. The uh, community council then said, so well, what is it special about the Cwm Dy? I think all I can say is, as a, an ancient and semi-natural, broadly native woodland, this is one of its best examples in Wales. We're trying to improve the access, improve the woodland, and of course improve the diversity of species here that already exists. This is the, the, the main aim and objective of Cumbie, is opening it up as an amenity for the public. It is this bridge, built by William Edwards in 1757, that brought together the two parishes of Kilabibith and Llangug, thereby helping to establish the modern town of Pontadawe. Today, Pont William Edwards is dwarfed by the highway improvements that have taken place around it. And the theme of bridge building is reflected in the council's motto, Avor bid ben bid bont, which roughly translated means he who would be a leader, let him first be a bridge. Building bridges of understanding is what council feels it is achieving by helping with the development of the twinning link between Pontadawe and the French town of Loch Minay. We felt that Pontadawe was uh, a little bit tatty and we felt that maybe there were some cities or towns in uh, Europe that uh, probably could show us a thing or two. We tried to organize the Twinning Society, and that, of course, is a flourishing uh, society on its, in its own right. Took some children over. They saw the beautiful town of Loch Minay, and children from Loch Minay have been over here. Choirs have been over. Uh, every year we have visits to and fro. Thousands and thousands of people have visited Loch Minay, and the same from Loch Minay to Pontadawe. The Pontadawe International Music Festival is held for one weekend in August each year. Pontadawe echoes to the sights and sounds of music, dance, arts, crafts, international food, British beer and Breton games. In sponsoring this event, Pontadawe Community Council is proud to be able to build bridges of friendship and understanding between the nations of the world and to be a part of such a worthwhile international movement for peace. In 1994, parish councils in England and community and town councils in Wales will be celebrating 100 years of service to the public. Yet, it is really only in the last 20 years, after the Local Government Act of 1972, that community councils have been allowed to develop as an effective third tier of local government. Only community councils can today truly claim to be local councils, representing grassroots public opinion and able to identify as faithfully as possible with their neighbourhood. Like many valley towns, Pontadawe saw substantial developments in house building, especially council house building in the 50s and 60s. The Kevin Llan site is typical of the era. 
Pontadawe Community Council has recognised the problems of the area and is currently working with a residence committee to provide a new purpose-built community hall. We're hoping that the guides, the brownies, the blind, the old age, the disabled, that we can, we can give something to them all and somewhere for them to meet. At the moment, we've got nothing up yet, and it's going to bring the community closer together. In fact, it's brought it closer together now by working together, raising funds for it. Right. And it's going to be a great advantage to everybody, young and old. With the opening of the Kevin Clan Community Hall, the council will have three such halls, and making certain that they are not only comfortable but also safe for users costs money. The halls require regular maintenance and improvements so that they can continue to offer facilities that compare with the best available locally rather than the worst. At Trebanos Community Hall, this has meant building new disabled toilet facilities and committee room, and at Anis Maidoy, a new pitched roof to replace the original flat roof at a cost in excess of £30,000. Each of the three halls has its own management committee, which works to a clearly defined constitution. The committees receive annual grants from the council and are allowed to keep all monies raised from letting the hall. Otherwise, the bulk of the expenses for running the hall are met by council. These include insurances, payments to caretakers, meeting fire safety standards and arranging licences for public entertainment. Important as its halls are to the community, the council believes that there is more to its work than bricks and mortar alone. And, in a sense, it aims to put people before property. The Wales Association of Community and Town Councils aims to clarify the role of community councils in a report which was published in December 1990. In our consultations with our council members and with the Welsh Office as well, we've argued as strongly as possible for keeping the existing powers of community and town councils. We think that more importance and more uh, place should be given to uh, community councils in consultation in the planning process and in decisions made in the planning process. And all this depends, of course, on adequate uh, finance. We see no reason why community council should not be able to uh, accept direct grants uh, from government and indeed from the European community. The powers that community councils have are bound by ability. Community councils are able to undertake a wide range of activities, as wide as they please, but they have to be able to afford them. Without a solid financial base, they can be limited for choice. So where does Pontadawe Community Council get its money from? And how does it spend it? The bulk of the money which Pontadawe can call its own comes from the rates, what was the community charge, and has now become the council tax. The community council issues an order, which is also known as a precept, to the district council, directing it to pay a named sum of money to cover community council expenditures for the whole of the financial year. Council expenditure falls into four classes. The coming year's expenditure, including a sum for contingencies, Outstanding expenditure incurred in previous years. Expenditure likely to be incurred before the precepted sum becomes available. And payments to a capital fund and a renewal and repairs fund. For the last few years, the Council has kept its precept to 38,000, with the excess of income over expenditure being set aside to help to pay for the new community hall at Kevin Clan. In Pontedawe, we run two very busy community halls with another hall being built, two parks and the wooded area of Cumdia. A lot of work is also being done on footpaths in the area. Council also tries to help as many local organisations as possible by giving grants. Pontedawe Community Council has donated £500 to Childline Wales in order to train a volunteer councillor. But the council